Have you ever wondered what could make you turn into a murderer? What would you do if your whole life changed in a blink of a second? What could make a father and a husband waiting for his family to meet him after two years of working in a different country turn into a killer? Welcome back to How Strange. It's time to talk about Vitaly Kaloyev and the Bashkrian Airlines Flight 2937 terrible mid-air crash. A bus driver took a wrong turn on the way to the airport, and 57 passengers missed their flight. They were supposed to go on a trip to the east coast of Spain. UNESCO organized this trip for a group of exceptionally gifted students from Ufa, Russia, and city officials' children. Out of 57 passengers, 52 were children. They waited three days for their new flying arrangements. A father, a Russian architect and builder, finished the two-year contract that kept him away from his family. Now he wanted to give his wife and two children a one-month vacation in Barcelona, Spain, to show them where he had spent the last two years. On July 1st, 2002, Bashkrian Airlines Flight 2937 took off from Moscow. There were 69 passengers as well as the crew. Destination? Barcelona. The passengers, the 52 children from Ufa and their five adult companies, nine crew members, and a family not affiliated with the UNESCO trip. The family, a mother and her two children. The plane took off without any incidents, and it seemed to be just another regular flight. That changed at around 11 p.m. when flying over southern Germany. A DHL Boeing 757 cargo plane traveled to Brussels from Bergamo, Italy. It had only two pilots on board. At 36,000 feet in the air, the two planes flew perpendicular and were on a collision track. Both had systems in place that should have prevented them from colliding. The Traffic Collision Avoidance System, TCAS, was required in all aircraft. It broadcasts a signal that other planes' TCAS systems can pick it up and, if the planes are on a collision track, tells one plane to go up and the other to go down. The two planes were getting closer and closer. It was a quiet night at Skyguide, the air traffic control agency operating the regional center in Zurich, Switzerland. Peter Nielsen was the only one working that night. His colleagues were on an extended break in the resting room, a common practice at Skyguide. Because it was an easy night, some maintenance was done on the radar and telephone lines. A backup radar was in use, but the phones were dead, and the control center's collision warning alarm was out of service. Nielsen was not aware of the latter. Since he was the only traffic controller working, Peter had to move back and forth between two radar screens that were not so close. When Bashkirian Airlines Flight 2937 and DHL Flight 611 entered the airspace controlled by Skyguide, Peter Nielsen was trying to guide another plane into landing at a nearby airport. The operation took longer than necessary due to maintenance. When he returned to the radar, he saw the two planes were less than one minute away from colliding. The two TCAS systems detected the danger too. The TCAS system on the DHL Flight 611 instructed the pilots to descend, and the one on Flight 2937 instructed the pilots to climb. Nielsen contacted Flight 2937 and ordered the pilots to descend to 35,000 feet. At this point, the pilots on Flight 2937 were receiving conflicting instructions, but they were trained to always listen to ATC, so they started descending. Bashkirian Airlines Flight 2937 crashed with DHL Flight 611 at 39,890 feet above Uber Ligen at 2335 and 32 seconds. The cargo jet's vertical stabilizer slashed the 2937's lower fuselage right in the front of the wings, ripping the Russian plane in half. The forward section plummeted to the ground. The back half, which included the wings and engines, continued forward, halted, and finally collapsed. All 69 passengers and crew members died in the air or when the plane crashed. Meanwhile, Flight 611 struggled for four minutes after losing nearly all of its vertical stabilizer before plummeting into a forest, killing both pilots. Vitaly Konstantinovich Kaloyev was waiting for his wife, Svetlana Kaloyeva, 44, and their two children, 10-year-old Konstantin Kaloyev and 4-year-old Diana Kaloyeva, at the airport in Barcelona. He was ecstatic about the vacation he had planned for them, but their plane was getting late. While waiting, a news reporter approached him and asked if he was waiting for a flight from Moscow. When his answer was affirmative, the reporter presented her condolences. Kaliev had no idea what she was talking about. No 
no one from the airport had told him anything. Kalayev, born in 1956 in Vladikavkaz, is an architect and deputy minister of housing from North Ossetia, Russia. His work ethic and professionalism made him one of his region's most respected architects and builders. But after a work incident, his finances were low. This was the reason why, in 2000, he accepted to go to Spain and build a villa for a Russian millionaire. They were a very tricky two years for the family. Diana had memorized her father's phone number and used to call him every day. She told him about her day, she sang nursery rhymes and told him stories. Svetlana managed to keep her composure during that time and raise their children as if he was there with them. As a reward for their hard time apart, Kaliev decided to prolong his stay in Spain and organized a dream vacation for his family. He wanted to show Svetlana the botanical garden, show his son the dinosaur skeletons from the museum, and just spend some time with his daughter. Kaliev was one of the first family members who arrived at the crash site. He convinced the police officers at the scene to let him search for his family. Diana's body was discovered three kilometers from the crash site. The tree attenuated her fall and her body remained whole. Visiting the place where her body was found, Vitaly discovered eight pearls from a necklace he gave the little girl. Konstantin's remains were found near a bus stop. Svetlana was found in a cornfield. Accompanied by his brother, Yuri Kaliev, he took his family back home, where he buried them. Vitaly spent most of his time in the cemetery during the following year. He turned one room from his house into a shrine. He placed the bed of his loved ones there and laid their favorite objects on them. During the memorial service for the first anniversary of the tragedy, Vitaly asked the head of Sky Guide to meet with the controller responsible for their disaster, but received no answer. Vitaly Kaliev was not the man to let things go their way. He hired a Moscow private investigator to find Nielsen. Nielsen had quit his job after the incident. He drove to Nielsen's house in the afternoon of February 24th, 2004. When a neighbor saw Kaliev, he asked what he wanted. Nielsen's first name was written on a paper. The neighbor pointed to Nielsen's front door, but Kaliev sat in the garden instead of knocking. Nielsen, living in Switzerland since 1995, noticed the intruder and walked outside to inquire about his intentions. His children joined him in the garden, but his wife tried to get him back inside. She was still inside when she heard a sort of scream. Nielsen was stabbed multiple times and died a short time later in the presence of his wife and three children. Kaliev was arrested the following day and was sentenced to eight years in prison on October 26, 2005. On November 8, 2007, Kaliev was released from prison on parole after serving two-thirds of his sentence. Returning to his home in the North Ossetian city of Vladikavkaz, Kaliev met enthusiastic crowds who cheered him as a hero. Members of the youth movement Naoshi displayed a banner that read, You are a real man, in Ossetian. Kaliev was appointed Deputy Minister of Republic Construction in his home of North Ossetia. On his 60th birthday, he received the highest state award from the local administration, the medal, to the glory of Ossetia. The medal was given for outstanding achievements in improving the living conditions of the region's residents, educating the youth, and maintaining law and order. Kaliev remarried in 2012 or 2013, more than a decade after the aviation disaster, to a woman called Irina Zarsova, an engineer at OAO, Savkov Kazanogo. Irina gave birth to their twins, a boy named Maxim and a girl named Sofia, on December 25th, 2018. After a lengthy investigation, it was established that Nielsen was not guilty of the collision, but it was too late for him. Changes were implemented after the tragedy to ensure that no pilot would ever be placed in the same situation as the pilots of Flight 2937. Even if a controller sends conflicting directions, pilots worldwide are now educated in ways to obey TCAS. If one plane disobeys TCAS commands, the TCAS systems can now issue a reversal, swapping which plane is instructed to rise and which is commanded to descend. Overall, the likelihood of a recurrence of a disaster has been considerably lowered. Skyguide accepted full responsibility for the tragedy and altered its workplace culture, including promises that a single controller would never be on duty alone again. However, the practice is still prevalent elsewhere, 